Zach from Gravel by California here in Susanville, ready to take on the last and gravel adventure. If you've seen my Mount Tam or Mount Low videos, you know I love rails to trails, not just because they're lighter grades, but also the history involved as well. But really, if you follow me on Patreon, you know I've been talking about the Biz Johnson for years, and now I finally get the opportunity to ride out here. Now, we'll be going through the Lassen National Forest, and really, this is a trip you have to make a destination weekend for everything that's around. People around here are super excited to show this area off, so let's rail, roll. <laughs> Located about an hour and a half northwest from Reno, Susanville was formed back in the 1850s that serves as the seat of Lassen County that was formed off of Plumas and Shasta counties in 1864, resulting from the Sagebrush War the year before over the confusion which state the area belonged to. Peter Lassen's resting spot sits in the area known as an early California pioneer, although his trail wasn't as successful as others, but still Susanville grew from lumber and mining, leading to the Southern Pacific's Fernley and Lassen line opening in 1914, that closing in 1978 led to this conversion into the Biz Johnson Trail, named after a local congressman, using the same tunnels and bridges from over a hundred years ago. If you're making a long drive to come to Susanville, it's worth to make a stop to Lassen Volcanic National Park along the way. That's a little more than an hour off, costing $15 to bike in, but it's a much better bargain than heading to the movie theaters, not mattering that you have to stick to paved roads, with Mount Lassen towering over 10,000 feet and the lakes below carrying the purest hues, adding to the excitement for the next day. Everyone was styling to kick off the first ride, with organizers Linda and Mark staging the 93 mile full squatch, as a number were eager to start this experience. With Susanville's mayor part of the send off, the Lassen Gravel Adventure had a proper golden start, as it would only be a few blocks saying goodbye to the residential, and pavement for that matter, as the course is almost completely dirt. I opted for the 63 mile half squatch so I could take it all in and only 2,600 feet of elevation helped the cause too. The time between my start allowed me to coordinate my Joan Embry inspired intro and also allowing time to stroll through the Susanville Depot that's not only on the National Register of Historical Places but also home to the Lassen Land and Trails Trust and full of a catalog of local history, which became a real problem for me as I showed up just in time for the start, but glad everyone was in like mind easing into the ride as crossing this short section of rail might be the most technical part on the Biz Johnson Trail, immediately leading to the first of many bridges that graces Biz Johnson in various forms with some new taking advantage of the older infrastructure. The pairing of homes hovering above would soon fade away into pure canyon bliss thanks to the geological workings of the Susan River and while the other types of options look well curated, the beauty of Biz Johnson is easy to envelop yourself in as the views must have distracted in its construction with the first 14 miles following this waterway, leaving you to wonder if there was any other purpose to build this other than the scenery. We were still rolling along with low light, which might have been an assist entering our first tunnel, as the ride note suggested bringing a light, but hoping others would was a successful workaround with no riders losing their way, upping my confidence to make it through the next beauty, where you just have to marvel at the amount of manpower used to construct this railway over a century ago. Besides the well-maintained service conditions, Biz Johnson keeps a gentle 3% grade at most, 
making this an ideal trail to make people to fall in love with gravel, joining in the fun that we were all having. But the course did slightly veer off the rail trail, descending briefly down some single track to keep this large group from making an at-grade crossing of Highway 36. And maybe the hardest section pound for pound of the day is the little short loose climb back up. But the reward is disproportionately favorable coming out with our first required dismountable moment crossing this football field size trestle bridge where you feel the biggest sensation of soaring through the day, especially floating above the previous iteration of the highway. Although the Biz Johnson Trail comprised over 40% of the half squatch course, we soon veered off after the bridge onto Corver Road, bringing a whole new form of visuals that was both stunning and eerie, rolling through the northeast zone of the 2011 Dixie Fire, with entire landscapes of trees removed, seeing signs of help with modern machinery in the ground, and those standing as stale monuments in the process of renewal. After our first two minutes of real descending, this description obviously foreshadowed a shift, transitioning to our feature descent of the day, with this Corver climb averaging 7.5% for one and three quarter miles that covers about a quarter of the total gain for the ride. But as our longest of the day, it's relatively tame by gravel standards, not just because of the pitch's consistency, but also the ideal surface conditions as well. But the primary sign we were reaching the top was escaping the fringe of the fire damage, making this effort quickly an afterthought. If there really was any suffering in you, it all got alleviated immediately on the preceding as this one half mile downhill was the funnest of the day, bringing a smooth lay down and eye shifting scenery that complemented the senses of this playful descent. My mental memory card felt full easing up as there was a bit of placemaking around, first reacquainting myself with the Susan River, then pulling into our first pit stop back onto the Biz Johnson Trail that would look familiar on the way back and when the mile ascent averaging 6% immediately followed. The good news was we were three quarters of the way done with today's climbing, having only just completed a quarter of the ride meaning so much ease for the rest of the day that you didn't have to worry about effort the rest of the route. Turning west onto Conrad Road, you felt completely enveloped by last and national forest. And yet curiosity gets you trying to cue in on this water body with the Hogback Reservoir just off to our edge, as you shouldn't overlook the beauty in this linear abstract that's formed by the juxtaposition from the density of these trees on you with their complete volume. After our first non-Susan River crossing, we made a well-marked ride off of Conrad, where the road not only retains its red, but you notice the little things, feeling the narrowment with the deeper shade and noticing when the sun hits but we transitioned minutes later onto another great road, rolling onto McCoy for our first incursion that was our most heavily trafficked of the day. But that didn't take away from these open views, enjoying everything Lassen has to offer. I turned away from the short course, continuing the half squatch on Norvell, extending my streak of two syllable roads as the middle third of this route kept us west of McCoy, which was also the flattest section of the ride. So it didn't seem surprising to see the sign crossing these active train tracks 
that didn't result in the Tour de France type delay directed soon after to a counterclockwise lollipop to our bumpiest section of the day, which you could tell is relative by my steady camera work that ended up being short-lived anyways, meaning I don't think anyone would call it a nuisance, making it amusing on the downslope, followed soon with our first turn on this upper loop as every new road didn't disappoint, leading me to realize that it felt like I had taken a lot in, but approaching Mooney Road signaled a couple plot lines. The obvious was that this mile was our only real section of pavement, but also that we had just hit the halfway point, as you don't want the mileage to peel away this quickly, resulting in me taking a little more time at the next aid station though I was eager to make it back to the Biz Johnson Trail. That was another 11 miles away and marveling how plainer it was at this altitude. I really wish someone could explain the geology of how much flatness we're getting. I should be complaining. <laughs> I unexpectedly didn't expect to finish the North Loop so soon but the miles started to shed even more efficiently with an assist with their exceptional course marking and still seeing plenty of faces out there to double confirm that I was on the right track and the literal interpretation worked too, as it's really easy to get lost here, obviously in the best of ways, because you're overthinking if riding comes to mind and Johnny Law is there to make sure you're not hat fielding as it's time to head back the opposite direction on McCoy that you notice is wide enough to be a two-lane road and is in better condition than many paved roads back home. But leaving it brought our last direction change, easy to know where we were without any signage, signaled by the stable grade and narrow smooth road in the presence of Sasqua. Never mind. Starting 10 miles up on the Biz Johnson Trail from where we previously left it, with the bridge serving as another important placemaker, signaling the return of the Susan River, where the trees just felt lusher, thanks to the proximity to the water, and goodbye to all those miles of plains, returning to canyon country. Spears continued to be at an all-time high, that coming into our final pit stop, I didn't even recognize it was the same earlier from Corver Road, leading to our 10 mile finale of Biz Johnson, which most of it resembled Disneyland's Thunder Mountain without the enormous wait times. But as seen from our previous encounter on nearby Corver Road, we experienced a wider scope from the Dixie Fire, highlighting more of the destruction and recovery that looked vast even at these speeds, with one vantage looking unworldly and the other providing the bliss that grabs your attention. Returning across our biggest landmark of the day, foreshadowing wasn't necessary to know the rest of the ride would be spectacular, with less people around than at the start, allowing you to enjoy at your own pace, feeling like a remix of the greatest hits, which as you know can be even better the second time. I took the last few miles home with Ed, who was a solid pacer at 80 years young, and I don't think anyone wanted to go full gas at the end, just to enjoy all this in the periphery, soon leading our way back to the depot, proving that Sasquatches do exist, as Linda and her crew were getting plenty of compliments, and Lass and Ale Works adding to the celebratory atmosphere with the Lass and Gravel Adventure ride a complete day of great riding. If there was any more boxes, <laughs> Lats and Gravel Adventure would check them all. I mean, first of all, you start off with the course, one of the best conditions I've been under, the scenery. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely feel the pride in this area and just being able to show it off. And everyone that rode it felt it too. 
thank you to Linda and Mark and everyone else involved because a lot of people will enjoy it in the future too. Anyways, if you want to support us, go ahead and hit this subscribe button here or go to our shop or on the Patreon so we can bring you more from the state of dirt. <laughs>